Hello, good morning and welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. I put a bait onto the bottom and it's from a lovely red gurnard. Now the American viewers might know these as a sea robin. But here in the UK we call these a red gurnard. Don't know if you can hear him croaking. They are a lovely eating fish. And this is quite a good one. So yeah, I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna keep this and fillet it off. I'm gonna get the <laughs> I'm gonna get the underwater GoPro on this one. I've just had another cracking gurnard. Apart from this one's a tub. And I tell you what, it is an absolute stunner. You don't get many that are as good at looking as this. They are just absolutely stunning, aren't they? All of these are a spike, with spikes on the back of the gills. Their head is rock hard. And I don't know if you can hear it grunting. You hear it grunting? Yeah, that is a beautiful tub gurnard. This is a red, and this is a tub. Now they can be confused, because you get small tubs and you get big reds. But the thing that stands out all the time is if the pectoral fins are like that. It's a tub. And if it's over three pound, it's a tub as well, because these don't get that big. The fillets you get off them, they aren't, they aren't over big. I mean, that, that's a gurnard fillet there. But they are delicious. I'm um, uh, yeah, you'll see these in a Gurnard catch and cook. We brought the Gurnard fillets around to Jim's. Now, you saw me catch them in a previous video. I filleted them there and then, and I vac packed them and froze them because we couldn't do the cooking straight away. And all I've done is I took them out of the freezer last night, let them defrost in the fridge, and there they are. We have James is helping us today in the kitchen, aren't you, James? James is a master chopper. So he's going to be assisting. We have the defrosted gurnard fillets. The larger ones I'm going to bake in the oven, and the smaller ones we will take out the pin bones, dredge in seasoned flour, pan fry, and I'm going to do a selection of dishes which we can eat with the sweet potato wedges seasoned with a little smoked paprika and thyme. Uh, we shall roast some fennel with peppers and radishes, red onion and garlic. It's like a blue peter moment with that one. Well I was just killing time waiting your arrival and whilst that's warm we'll fold in some uh, rocket I'm going to do a sort of a fine ratatouille with some shallots, courgette, Eggplant. aubergine and some peppers and something else I've started. We'll have some sweet and sour red onions. These are two red onions which I very finely sliced and I sweated those down, softened them in a bit of butter and oil for about 15 minutes. And we'll finish those later. And also, uh, I'll make a, if there's any peppers left, we'll make a pepper radish. So we'll have the fish fillets and a selection of things to go with them. That's it. You go down, if you lay it down flat on its side there, James, that way you'll miss the seeds. Good lad. That's lovely. 
So for what I want is nice big pieces like that. Okay. Well done, James. So do you want to slice that one down the middle? So you're doing the red peppers here, James. And you're just fine. Wedging the sweet potatoes. There's some olive oil in there with a bit of dried thyme. And I'll coat those with some salt and pepper. Toss them around with my fingers. And the other one, which I've got on at 180, will be hot and ready for them. So we are now rolling the chopped pepper in some olive oil. And then we'll season them. And then we shall slip those in the oven to roast with the sweet potato. Mm, nice. Potatoes. Good job, James. Grind a black. Grind a black pepper. And a little sprinkle of sea salt. That's lovely. Sprinkle that all around. Brilliant. What is it you've got on this one? Uh, we've got sweet potato wedges. There's a grind of pepper, some sea salt, and I sprinkled a teaspoon of smoked paprika over them. So for turn those around so that they get coated in oil. Right James, can you pick up your tray please? Okay. And bring it over to the oven. You can do it with your hands James, it's cold. That's it. And we'll slide that in on the middle shelf. Good job, well done. Super. Now put your cloth back in your apron. We've got a deep saute pan which I'm going Oil. A good splash of sunflower oil and we are going to cut the fennel bulb in half down into suitable wedges because these are quite chunky I'm going to give them a five minutes head start and then I shall add there's a couple of small red onions there, some pepper, a couple of cloves of garlic, and some radishes. And basically, I've just been going through the fridge and I'm going to use up just odds and ends I've got left over. Uh, put some pepper in. Could you put yeah, I want about 15 grinds. One, two, three. Right. That's jolly good. Mm, good, you need to keep tidy, don't you? Right. Whilst the fennel is cooking, start some rapper too. Cooking. Sunflower oil. Sliced red onion, not too thin. I sort of a moderate chunk into there. James, could you slice up these yellow peppers for me and take the pit out and the seeds? How small the pieces do you want? Big. Well, we'll cut them down. Shall I do the first one? That's it. You take all the sides off and then we'll take the pith out. Are well, you just quartering some shallots there, are you? Uh, yeah, good. You how, ma how, many, yeah, how many shallots roughly are you using? Half a dozen? I've got half a dozen. Uh, large shallots. Cool. I'm doing them in my finger because my board is... Because our glamorous assistant is using the board. Yeah. Taking on a bit of colour now. And Adding the vegetables. You do all of those. Cool. Nice pepper sticks then. Eh?
Those are some brilliant pepper sticks. Now we've got the Just be careful because that pan's hot. Strips. Good job. Well done. Right, stay with us, John. And we'll let those sweat down with the onions. And then we'll add the courgette and the aubergine. Right, James, this dish of vegetables needs to be tipped into there. Nice presentation. Well, nicely done. You've done this before, haven't you? It's lovely and colourful, isn't it? It is. Right, we're going to put that in the oven, James. So the wedges are down there. They last 10 minutes. I've moved the peppers up to the top. Another five minutes will have. Do you just out. wait for them to be soft? Is that what you're waiting for? Well, if, yes. If we could get a bit of blacking on there too, that would be lovely. Tidy as you go. We have some tomatoes. tomatoes. Now I wonder. Would you be alright with that? Yeah. I just think like the second tomato. Right, what? let Jim show you how to do the first one and what? then you'll do the rest, okay? Okay. Thin half. 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 So we have. Quarters. You do the four quarters for me. If you lay it like this, look, flat, it doesn't roll around as much. That one. So we're just keeping the flesh and not the seeds then. Okay, try that. Fine. Well done. And all these bits will go to the allotment. You'll end up growing tomato plants on your compost heap. Well, hopefully the compost heap will get nice and hot. Stop the seeds. That's it. Saw your way through. Uh, yes, we quartered the tomatoes. Good job. Taken out the flesh. And I just don't want the dish full of tomato pot. The seeds, quite right. I imagine it adds quite a bit of moisture to it as well, all that. It does, thing. but we can always add a bit of liquid. Right, James, so there's your plate of prepared <coughs> tomato. Could you Careful of the, make that. sure your arms don't touch the... Um. Super. Good Thank job. You. And the plate straight into the sink, please. Continue to that. My mouth is actually watering thinking it's about that. Lovely. It tastes right. I just from the smells. It's delicious, isn't it? Right. Now we're going to add some garlic. garlic. Can you peel the garlic, James? We did yes. this last night, didn't we? You know what? Slip the end off from under the makes it a bit easier. Use this little veg knife, look. See the rooty end? Um, Cut that off. Really and then the speed that skin will come away. Alright? So the upside down. That's it. If you're struggling with that one, you should go back to your... Sticky knife. Do that well, James. Good luck. That's alright. No, no, no. Don't not yet. Not yet. It's just taking a woody bit off the end. Oh, I see. Sorry. Good job, James. Well done. Okay. Put that one over there. I'll use those in a set. Right. So that's just sliced, not diced. Yeah, just sliced that. But leave that on a low light. We're getting ready for the red pepper relish. So there's a pan there, which I've warmed with some sunflower oil. I've got the sliced red onion. Is that about? Is that a little one or is that that's, half? That's two tiny. Right. So James, we can have that. Garlic chopped up now, please. Which yep. yeah. well one? Yeah, Hold on, James. Are you going to tip it in through? Pick up the board. There we go. Nicely done. And then pop the lid on. Thank you for wiping it down. Ooh. They're softening nicely. So we've got this 
Oh, that's just the red peppers already. That is. Spelling, lovely. And there's our red peppers. Just watch out for the edge of that tray, Jim. Okay, just going to put that on there again. Very hot. I can see what you mean about how yeah. it's, uh, it's not blackened, but they've almost blistered, haven't they? Yes, they have. Yeah, right So, Jim's going to cook these ones because they're super hot, right? Okay? Yeah. You can buy these in tins and jars ready roasted. In which case you could just slice them up and have them very roughly. What chopped. is it that the roasting does to them? Yeah, it changes the, the flavour completely. Because I was wondering what's going to be the difference between red peppers in there and red peppers that have been roasted. Uh, Does it just make them stronger flavour? I want these extra soft. So we've got the red onion and the roasted red pepper and some garlic and a bit of thyme, a little sprinkle of sea salt and a few grinds of pepper. And a good pinch of... Oil. What's it smell like, Jim? Delicious. What does that smell of? Very, very peppery. Roasted smells of roasted red peppers. Mm. It's funny that. Good job. We want a long, thin strip. They do indeed. We, we do call them zucchinis, Jim. Yeah, you're right. We call them courgettes. Now, hi. How much tomato paste was that? Sorry? Oh, that was a good tablespoon of tomato paste. And I've got a bit of vegetable stock here. So you're, you would, you're going to dice those ones, are you? You're going to cut them into pieces? Yep, that's it. Good Just job. like that. Got the vegetable stock from last night's potatoes and carrots, sweet. If you didn't have the stock from last night, could you choose a stock cube? You could use a stock cube and dilute it. That's why makes good sauces and is excellent for the gravy. Oh! Hmm. Oh, you missed one, did you? Yep. Yeah. We'll just we'll leave that one aside, that one can go to the allotment. So you've put the lid on there to sw to let them sweat now, haven't you? Yes. Good pinch of dried thyme. Mint. Good job, James. Gently. That's it. Big handfuls. Turn the <laughs> gases off. Uh, right. Someone asked me about this, about the sweating down. By keeping the lid on, it keeps the moisture inside the pan, doesn't it? It does. So it stops them from drying yeah. out and sticking. Yes, I'm going to make a relish now. To the roasted red peppers, softened onion, garlic, thyme. I'm going to put a dash of cayenne pepper. We can always add some more later if we like it. You all right? Yeah. A splash of... This is cider vinegar. Red wine vinegar would be good. White wine vinegar would be good. That's about a tablespoon. A dash of soy sauce. Honey, I'm going to put a spoonful in for the relish. And Just any, any honey. Well, this is, yes. Supermarket yeah. honey. Yeah. A tip. A hot water spoon. When you so it falls off the spoon? It falls right off the spoon. And I want. I never bother because I like sucking it off the spoon uh, afterwards. Uh, <laughs> a great trick for golden syrup and treacle too. And a teller. Uh, yeah. An equal quantity of. Red wine vinegar. Cider vinegar. Or red wine vinegar. Or. White wine vinegar. White wine vinegar. So we'll just leave those to simmer down. This is the ratatouille mix, which has been simmering away, but I need the frying pan to do a couple of fish fillets. So I'm going to... Would it help if I got you another frying pan? Uh, no, because we, we need extra storage then, John. Uh, I'm going to 
Just put this in the oven to finish off. It's practically there, but the courgettes would probably benefit from 20 minutes of roasting. And I can clean that pan up and we can use it for the fish. I put a splash of balsamic vinegar into there. Check the other ingredients first. Of it. That is nicely cooked. Yes. I was just thinking though, the radishes are going to be the most dense thing in that. There, nice. Uh, All you were doing there is you were just, just checking out. I oh, had the way, weren't you? Yeah, or in the cases of everything, how soft it is now. So, right, I'll clean down the pan, John, and we'll... And you're just leaving these, these relishes these to simmer down now, aren't you? Sweet and sour onions. Just simmering away quietly on a low heat. I'm going to add some chopped coriander and chopped parsley to that. And what are you doing over here, James? Are you... Tidying away. Good job. A handful of coriander. A little bit into the roasted vegetables. And the rest into red pepper relish. I want some parsley. This is flat leaf. Again, a small handful in with the roast vegetables. Rest in with the relish and our old friends, the last of the capers. That's about a dessert spoon. And who are you, look, who are you looking after there? Winston. Winston. Yeah. And who is Winston? Introduce Winston. Uh, like How old is Winston? Uh, well, he's older than mummy because uh, he's, he's about 25. He's, <laughs> he was my teddy bear and then he was mummy's teddy bear when mummy was born in the 90s and then was Lizzie's teddy bear when she was born in the 50s. 2000s. So mummy was about 10 when she had Lizzie then. And then he was James's but he disappeared for a long time. And where was he? Down the side of Lizzie's bed. Indeed. And we needed some surgery, didn't we? Yeah. So we had to stitch him up at home. Yeah. Very neat needlework. Yes, that's the main What is the main <laughs> Right. Fold in. Lovely colours again. So you leave the lid off now so it reduces down, will you? Well, I've, no, I've turned the gas off. I'm just going to let it. Because that one's stand. more is, liquid than that one. This is, let's just boil the liquid away now. And then we'll taste them. Ooh, that one's, yeah, that, yeah. a completely different um, set of aromas coming it, from that one as soon as you take the lid off. Should taste very different. I'll just stir. Handle is too hot to hold. Just run it. I'll leave that on the side. So you've got fennel, radish, onions, and peppers in that. Red onion, peppers, yes. Some garlic, thyme, and then we put coriander, a little bit of coriander, parsley, and I'm going to fold rocket into that as well. That too can just sit on the side. Those smells are incredible. Time uh, for the fish. Yay! Time for the fish. Right, now get on to these lovely firm gurnard fillets. We're just taking out these little pin bones. I didn't show the filleting of the gurnards. It was right at the end of the day and to be honest I just wanted to be in. What we have got 
is I got a video where I got a professional fish filleter to go through a load of species to show you how to fillet them. I will tag that into the description of the video. There is gurnard on that video. Can you get them all nice and flowery? Tray. Right. This tray is felt checked. Okay. So that's it. We've got seasoned flour. Plain flour. Salt. Yeah, plain flour, yes. Thank you. Let's shake off the excess. What's the reason for flowering them? Is it just so they don't stick? It just helps protect the flesh. Uh, right. Pop those in the oven. And the ratatouille's in there. So just so we get a lid to stop the ratatouille drying the fish. And They've gone back nicely loads now, so they're finished. Just vegetable oil. James, oh, you're having a good clart here, aren't yeah. you? Right. I'm having fun. You just turn those I'm in the flour, shake the excess off, and onto the plate, please. Yep, I picked up an errant bone there. And I've got another errant bone! No way! She's really nice. Yeah. It's all right. You just do the other ones first, then. Good job. And Hannah, what are you doing whilst we're I'm not doing? being a binocular sat on my phone. We've just found that there's a fake account on TikTok. The fish locker wasn't on TikTok, and someone's used our logo and our name, and they've screen recorded our YouTube videos and posted them on there. So I have now in retaliation set up an official fish locker TikTok. It's called the official fish locker. And I'm just in the process of reporting the other one. So please go and find us on TikTok. <laughs> Sorry Jane, what was that? Lightly right. floured and lightly floured uh, into uh, the hot oil. Skin side down first and then we'll Flip them over, and give them two minutes on the skin side, and I'll turn them over and give them a minute, and then we'll flip them, them not, back. They're not of a thick other, so they don't need. No, that's why I'm roasting the bigger fillets, and I'm going to pan fry the smaller fillet. Gurnard is a very firm, meaty textured fish, it lends itself to one pot cooking, roasting in the oven roasting the whole fish. What it's excellent for, if we have the carcasses gone, we could also be making rebase. The carcasses. Lovely. Uh, but the carcasses, the crab pots took yeah. priority. I turned the carcasses into lobsters <laughs> and crabs. You right, you doing okay? Just a sample of the relish, that's lovely. Put a bit more honey in there. Too much vinegar. Uh, sticky onions are joyous and I'm just going to have a little taste of this. I turned the fish for it. See, they've had a good minute on the flesh side. I'll put them back to the skin side now. I'm going to turn the heat mm. down. There's plenty of lovely little white meat and fillet. Oh, super! I turned the gas off. There's enough heat in the pan to cook those. And a uh, lemon. Everybody's favourite topic. Uh, no. Just a little knob this time. Uh, that's had five minutes. And it's halfway down. Little fillets into a warm dish. Just put some other buttery juices over. Without the lemon pips, hopefully. Just put those in the oven. Keep warm. Another 
two minutes and they are cooked. Now, these I prepared earlier. They are good old staple Kirby breadcrumbs. Just butter and herbs and breadcrumbs. Yep. Pan fried until they toast. Just for a little change, I put I finely diced soft red onion. So put those back the breadcrumbs. They're only really going to have a couple more minutes just to I'm just gonna turn up. the oven off. James is busy laying the table in the background of anticipation of a feast. Let's hope it's not a barmicidal feast. And we'll gently fold that in. And then you've got your ratatouille. That's the you? ratatouille that's come out of the oven. Then the, the sweet sticky onions. Sweet sticky onions. The red pepper relish. The pan fried uh, gurnard fillets. The smaller ones in lemon and butter. Our sweet potato wedges. And there's the larger meatier gurnard fillets which we roasted in the oven and we've got those lovely buttery crispy breadcrumbs so i'll what would you like to try first james gurnard, gurnard. cool try it first james be careful it might be hot don't forget to blow on it Good. Put a bit of that there. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Thank you. And then you can play. Mm -hmm. I'll put a bit of that like there. And then you can it have it tastes like Pollock. It just tastes like Pollock, does it? Yeah. Mm. That's good. There isn't you go. You like you go Pollock. Pollock. Oh, I need a plate for John. No, you don't. <laughs> vegetables you've chopped up? Do you want well, to try you're going some in for seconds, James. Well done. Of the roast vegetables? Would you like to try a bit of sweet potato? Please try a little bit of sweet potato. Mm -hmm. Very nice. I'm just like, I might be the fish for now. Oh wow, mm. those um, those mm. sticky onions there. Mm. Something really special, aren't they? I've never had gurnard before, that's mm. delicious. Really nice, isn't it? Oh, Just the, the colours of it, the colours of it, and everything it is absolutely stunning. It's up there for me with the John Dory one. We were just talking about the um, the red pepper relish. It was it's amazing, isn't it? It's unreal. I can't even describe what it tastes like. I'd but the gurnard as well. It's not a. It's not an offensive. No, fish. it's got it's got a fishy taste to it, but it's not like. An incredibly strong taste, but also it's not Lovely. like nothing. Sometimes you can eat pollock and it can just be like eating, eating clouds. It's not what I expected it to taste like. I don't know what I expected it to taste like, but... Mm. You were a little bit apprehensive, weren't you? Because gurnard is your favourite fish. It's an <laughs> ugly fish, but you don't eat ugly. They're my favourite to catch. Same as John Dory's. They're an mm. unusual looking fish, but they taste absolutely weird. James is working his way through his third gurnard fillet, aren't you? He's eaten all of that. <laughs> no. James absolutely destroyed those gurnard fillets. Did he have all of them? Did anyone else? I had, I had half. I didn't so, yeah. try any of the pan um, Yeah, I, I guess that got the seal of approval. If we're getting any nice gurnards again, I know where they'll be going. <gasps> Straight there. <laughs> Jim, that was absolutely amazing. Every single part of that was... Yeah. was Absolutely. It was wonderful. a joy to eat, wasn't it? It was delicious. Delicious. I'm in raptures doing the dishes because those flavours are just rolling around the inside of my mouth. My mouth is like fizzing. <laughs> I was just talking there, some of the breadcrumbs yeah, and the sticky onions sticky have ended up really. sticking to my teeth like sweet, so when you're picking them out it's still like a like you're chewing a soft sweet. Thank you very much, Jim. That uh, was absolutely uh, amazing. Delighted. Uh, always a and James, well done for helping. Good yeah. cooking, James. Indeed. Good chopping skills. I, uh, I hope you enjoyed joining us. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.